Now, if you are following along in your bulletin, you will note that the preacher for the day is Laura Warner Gilmer. She is unable to join us because of complications with the weather, but the work that she has done to prepare the sermon uh, has paid off. She has shared the manuscript of that with me, and I will be reading it for us. We hope to capture her preaching this text later so that you might hear it in her voice. But I imagine you will hear her voice come through even as I offer this sermon. So again, reading her work. Well, did anyone else notice that today's readings are not quite subtle? There's nothing quiet in Isaiah admonishing us to shout out and Joel telling us to sound the trumpet or the psalmist's reminder to recognize how good God is to us despite our behaviors and knowing that we are but dust. Paul was not shy in telling the people of Corinth that they had a job to do, not to try to repay God for his grace, that cannot be done, but because his work is what we were created for. And then here comes the Gospel of Matthew telling us to do the work, the real work of love in the passages just preceding what we read today, but not to show off while we seek to fulfill our mission. Beware of practicing your piety before others. Wait, who among us doesn't like a little recognition? Who isn't buoyed up by the occasional pat on the shoulder and an attaboy? I'd love to tell you that I have no desire for your approval or affirmation, but we all know better. Come on, most of you have met me. So the question comes around, the one we may not need to literally ask ourselves this year for sundry reasons, ashes, to wipe or not to wipe? I grew up in worship traditions other than the Episcopal Church. God got me here, thanks be to God. When I was growing up, we didn't do Ash Wednesday. The very first time I took part in an Ash Wednesday at Ascension, I couldn't wait to get out there and show everybody my ashes. I was so proud of the smudge on my head that I even worried that the wind might blow it off before anybody got a chance to see it. I guess we know where somebody thought it was important to practice her piety, huh? I wanted everyone to see that I was proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord. Unfortunately, I may have had him on my forehead, but I didn't have him seated in my heart. I was carrying around a sign that said, hey, people, do good. Like I'm obviously doing good. I must be. I went to church today on a Wednesday. And that happens, doesn't it? Sometimes we put on the uniform, but forget to perform the service that the uniform represents. Oh, and we can get called out for it too. Not just by Matthew, Paul, Joel, and Isaiah either. When I left Ascension that first Ash Wednesday, I went straight to Kroger, right down the street. Did I need groceries? Sure. But I needed to be seen even more. And I was. A little boy riding in the cart, shopping with his mother, was kind enough to tell me, you have dirt on your face. His mom shushed him and gave him a murmured explanation as I passed. To which the young man replied, but mommy, it looks silly. My next stop was the ladies' room near the pharmacy to wipe my face. Hey, I was look willing to look righteous, not silly, right? Was my embarrassment from the ashes on my face or was it from my reason for leaving them there? What had I taken into my heart in that service? I'm sure Father Michael Harmuth gave me the guidance in his sermon, and you can check your Book of Common Prayer on page 264. I heard at the same message then that you heard today, but I wasn't awake enough to follow. Consider 
or ingest the good news that Father Michael had to tell. God knew and knows that I was never anything more, as far as raw materials go, than the sooty leftovers of something good that had gone through fire. And he loved, loves, me anyway. Sometimes it seems that these readings appointed for the beginning of the season of Lent contradict each other. Joel and Isaiah are yelling, blow horns and shout it out. And Paul is saying, be ambassadors for Christ. But Matthew is telling us not to seek to be seen or noticed or credited for our belief and good works. So again, ashes, to wipe or not to wipe? Well, consider this. The next year wanting to be a good little closet prayer and secret alms giver, my plan was to wipe the mark off I'd been given as I left the church. But a funny thing happened. I got distracted. I spent good, peaceful church time actually listening to the words of the readings and the gospel. I left the building sidetracked by thinking about how to devote myself in a new way over the next 40 days and eschewing some of my own selfish wants and being the dust that blows Christ's love into the world and around my space and time and trying to leave a little of it everywhere I could. So, where did I go? Well, to Kroger, of course. Hey, it's right down the street and convenient. This time, I walked through the store, blissfully unaware and not on parade, and an older man stopped me and said, thank you. To which I immediately responded, you're welcome, but what for? He said, you obviously prayed for someone today. Who knows, it could have been me. Ashes, to wipe or not to wipe? I don't know. Does it matter? I still don't know. What I do know is that people may see the soot on our heads, but God knows the dust we are and loves us anyway. He has empowered us, though we are but dust to do and be his, rather than just to be seen to do and thought to be his. Rather than crying out, I worry for the homeless in this cold, we can drop the price of a Starbucks extra shot of caffeine on some socks or underwear. Instead of proclaiming some of my best friends are whatever, we can go out and make friends and be friends to the whatevers. Instead of reciting the Nicene Creed in unison from memory, we can read the words, listen to them intentionally, and meet our days intending to live them. Will we always get it right? No. We are just dust, and God loves us anyway. So, what are we going to do with that?